Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 35 of the platform specific series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. And as you can see on the screen, we're going to be looking today at the Mega CD or the um, Genesis CD. Now, before we go into the Mega CD, I'm going to tell you about my book. I've written a book on assembly which covers Z80, 6502, 68000, 8086, and ARM. It's called Learn Multi Platform Assembly with Chibi Akamas, and it's available now on Amazon as a print book or as a digital Kindle book. So if you're interested, please take a look at that. Anyway, the Mega CD. Now, the Mega CD has two processors, and they use separate blocks of memory, and the um, basic processor is built into the Genesis, and there's the faster 12 megahertz one that's built into the Mega CD, which has some extra functionality. Today's example, we're just going to be looking at the basic regular one in the Genesis. We're going to learn how to get a small file up to 32 kilobytes running on that. This is going to be enough for us to get our simple games that we've created in the past running on the Mega CD and this is really just a, a taster to get you started with creating a valid Mega CD image. Now I've got my um, Japanese Mega CD set up here and it does depend on the firmware you provide to the um, emulator. So you can see here we've got the Japanese one and then you can see here is my hello world message in the usual colors. And you can also see um, it's messed with the um, font of the um, splash screen of the Mega CD. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. Okay, well let's go over to the source code and let's take a look. Now, creating a Mega CD file is pretty straightforward. The Mega CD BIOS loads our program into memory address FF quadruple zero, um, but we do need to have a header of hexadecimal 200 bytes, that's some um, 512 bytes, um, and this is the actual start of the cartridge. Now, the first thing in our program is actually going to be the splash screen. The splash screen is part of our program, but there's a problem, you see, the um, BIOS to check that we've got a, a legitimate gain compares the splash screen routine of our program to the one in the firmware. Um, I guess this is a copyright trick because we can't create a valid CD without having the Sega logo in it, and now we've bre breached their word marks. So I think that's how it works. So we have to include the correct file for our system. And what I've done is I've created or ripped possibly three um, template ISOs that will create a valid CD for the Mega CD systems. So if you want a Japanese one, you will need to use this ISO here. If you want a European one, you would use this one, and we've got an American one as well. And um, these are all basically the same. Now, the bootstrap section is approximately hexadecimal 783 bytes. The um, one for the Japanese systems was actually a lot smaller. They made it larger for the Western systems. Now, you can see here I've used the European one on the Japanese system, and my game will not start because I've selected the wrong system. But if I change the country here to Europe, and we run again, our game will now work okay. Now, I, I've got these basically from exist from real games. I've um, copied them from the first few sectors of those games. You can do this yourself or you can download mine from my website. As I say, they, they need to be pretty rigid, but you can put your own name, game name and um, release date and things in there if you want. Now, let's just quickly, you can see that has now worked on that system. Now, let's just quickly go over to my other screen and we'll have a look. Okay, so what we've got here is a um, hexadecimal dump of the ISO images. And I just thought it'd be a bit interesting to have a quick look at the different systems. So you can see here is the start of the CD here. And we've got um, Sega Disk System. Uh, I've put the um, name of my game in just because it amuses me and a date, but we didn't need to do that. And the only thing I really want to point out at this stage is that each of these systems has different data in the first few sectors of the CD image. You can see that the Japanese one is mostly full of these, which are actually no op commands. And that's because the um, Japanese BIOS compares a much smaller area. But for consistency, um, I and a lot of the game developers created a, um, a, a boot sector block that was the same on all systems. So just so that they could easily port their game to other systems. And that's what I've done as well. So you can see here, we've got this block here, which um, this is the start of our um, our code here. This is the first area of memory that's transferred by the BIOS into RAM. We're actually running from RAM here. And then we've got the um, 
the boot block to uh, match the BIOS and that, that's the same. And then the rest of our game is exactly the same as it ever was. Now the only restriction we're going to have here is that our game is going to have to be less than 32 kilobytes in size. Now if we wanted a bigger game what we would actually have to do is then start negotiating with the sub CPU on the uh, Mega CD and ask for files to be transferred into RAM. There's a shared area of RAM that the two systems can share although to gain access to that RAM we need to halt the sub CPU so that's going to be a little bit daunting as I say this is just a very simple example to get you started running something on the Genesis um, my hello world example you can see here is running but you can also run YQuest on the Mega CD now I'll just set the right BIOS here and we'll just fire this up so this is the um, YQuest game here so it's just starting up now now the YQuest game is of course the little game I created a little while back. Um, it was very straightforward to port it, I just needed to put a new boot sector in. And here you go, the game is working in exactly the same way as it did before. So as I say, if you've got simple examples or little um, test games, you can transfer them across in this way. Now that's how we um, can create a valid header for our CD image. How do we actually convert our files to a CD? Well. The CD itself is just a regular ISO. If I go over to my other screen here, we, we've got 7-zip here. This is a simple zip program. Well, if I go to my release Genesis folder here and I select my ISO here, you can see the ISO can actually contain files. But the only file I've put in my ISO is the message I am a fish, which is a red dwarf quote for people who followed that series. So our ISO is a valid ISO. The, the only difference is the first 32 kilobytes or so is a custom boot sector. Now the ISO standard doesn't define anything has to be in that area and the Genesis has basically used it for a proprietary boot sector. So how do we create our valid CD? Well all we need to do, it's very straightforward, all we do is we build our file to a binary in the same way as we always did. I'm using um, Vasm for my assembly as I always do. So we're just by building it and I'm creating a file called boot.bin but th there's nothing special about this file, it's just a, a binary file. The only special thing about it is it's got that block at the start which will show the splash screen that matches the bias of the system we're loading. Now once we've created that what I'm using is I'm using the free program MKIT K ISO FS, which I guess is make ISO a file system. We're using ISO level one, which is the most basic one. We're specifying an output file here, gencd.iso. We're then specifying what's known as a generic boot sector here, which is our file, that, that's our program. And we're then specifying just to pad the ISO out to a 32 kilobyte block. I'm adding a volume label, the ISO will be called tubiacomers.com because it amuses me and we're specifying to include all of the files which is my very important I'm a fish message which we must let the world know. Once we've done that we're just starting with our fusion emulator and specifying the ISO. Now we do need to make sure that our emulator is set up with the right BIOS and that the BIOS is available. I've updated my downloads with the new scripts and with the new examples. What I can't do is I can't give you those BIOSes because I might get in trouble. So um, I'm afraid you'll have to find your own emulator BIOS but you should have enough to get you started and as I say if you change the starting address of your program and include the correct um, starting sectors for your system, you should be able to get your little games and programs running OK on the Genesis a CD. So there we go. OK, well, that's all we're covering today. A pretty short lesson, I know, but um, it, was a, um, it was a topic that needed some research. And to be honest, um, it's one that you could do a lot with. The, the Genesis CD has a lot of advanced functionality. It's got a faster processor, 12 megahertz, and it's also got scaling and rotating functions, not to mention the fact that it's a CD drive with lots of storage. But um, the documentation is pretty patchy, unfortunately, on how to use the sub CPU. So um, I, I'm not sure how much more I will be doing covering this. But if you like what you saw, please you know, hit the like and subscribe and let me know because um, you know, I always try and um, focus my development efforts based on what people want to see. So if you do want to see more of this topic then 
please let me know and I'll see what I can do. Anyway, as I said before, if you um, want more assembly and you're interested in buying my book, please go to the Amazon website. It should be available in most territories. There's some weird things with regards to the UK, can't ship to certain areas and things. But um, you can certainly buy it from Amazon.com. And as I say, if you don't want the print version, you can get the digital version as well, whatever does it for you, so to speak. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you find it interesting. And then I hope you'll go to my website and download the source code and the build scripts and have some fun with it yourself. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.